Hey guys, welcome back to Mega Nerd Squad. We just saw scary stories to tell in the dark. So yeah. the scariest thing about this movie was uh, the acting. The acting was a little off. Towards the end, it got a little bit better, yeah. especially from the main protagonist. Well, because they dropped down to two instead of all five of them. <laughs> it took a long time to see any monsters. And it took like <laughs> 30 to 40 minutes just for setup. But yeah. the setup would have been better if the characters were actually relate more relatable and they actually were good, They're like very be better acting in a sense. Because like I didn't really feel anything for all of, basically all of these characters, and it didn't really work throughout the whole movie. I wanted to get into the movie, the whole movie, but it just none of the characters really I was really attached to. They they yeah. had that one kid that tried tried to keep me in the comic relief, but yeah. none of them were landing. So it was just you know. The boringness kept continuing, and the eye rolls kept happening. The coolest thing about this movie, though, I will say, are the monsters, for sure. The only sad thing is that you don't get a lot of the monsters. Pretty much what you've seen in the trailer is what you see in the movie. Yeah. you see in the trailer, you pretty much see in the movie. The scariest monster was towards the end, the twisted guy, I forget what his name was. Mm -hmm. And then I also thought the scarecrow dude was actually pretty creepy. But they added in that really cheap, like, CGI bugs on his face that I didn't think was necessary. And I thought he looked just scarier without having the bugs. Like, they tried to make it scarier, in my opinion. Like, And maybe that was because maybe it's meant for a more younger audience. It's PG-13, not yeah. rated R. So I sadly. understand. It, yeah, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we would have liked to see some scarier stuff. Less jump scare more actual horror. Oh, yeah. believe me, the jump scares, they won't get you. They didn't get me at all. So the jump scares won't get you at all. It's not very good jump yeah. scares either. You know when the jump scares are happening. Yeah, they literally it's when there's drop pure quiet. silence yeah. and you peek your head out. Boom, <laughs> jump scare. It's like we've seen this before. But it sounds familiar. I, I, yeah, I feel familiar. Feel it. Like, yeah, throughout the whole movie, I was like, I, was I, like, felt, okay, I feel like going, where this yeah. is going. Like, I've, I've seen this before, but it doesn't yeah. work. Well, I just think it was really slow taking off. I really enjoyed the fact that they had an, uh, a drive-in movie theater. I loved the setting for that. Well, it was the 1960s. There were some movie references that at the beginning, uh, like some monsters at the beginning that the girl had because she loves horror. Oh yeah, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yep, and also Night of the Living Dead, they play at the driving theater. Oh, yeah. The overall story didn't play out well because at the end, she literally just tells her that it's her fault, like, she's doing this stop. That's it. So I was like, okay, maybe she could have just done that at the very beginning of the movie. Movie movie could have been 30 minutes. I don't really, like, appreciate the whole, like, overarching story, but, like, the actual stories themselves, you know, there's actually something, because, like, if you guys actually read, like, the uh, scary story of Simon Dark, like, the book series as kids, you know, this movie is actually just pretty much straight up, like, nostalgic for you. So they stay true to kind of, like, the stories themselves, because obviously, oh. like, the uh, first story, like, Harold, you know, if you actually read the book, it was basically about two farmers who abused the scarecrow, you know, and then pretty much one day, they were scared because the scarecrow was like growing, you know, was getting taller. So they decided to go, but you know, obviously, one decided he had to go back, and then pretty much from a distance, the other guy decided the other guy getting skin alive. I'm kind of sad that freaking that guy, his death wasn't kind of like all like gory. Yeah. It should have been gory. It should have been. At you know, something some blood, more. Some blood. Something it. more. Like PG-13, you could have some blood in it. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't really have any blood in it. So, yeah, I think what they missed was that people that read those stories yeah. are our age now. But yeah. yet they're still pertaining to a younger audience. Yeah, like, yeah, you know. You know, so I think that's where they kind of missed it. I think they could have made it rated R yeah. or, you know, just added a little more horror to it. Yeah. Even being PG-13. Because you got to realize that the people, your target audience, the people who read these books, yeah, they're, they're older now, they're more yeah. sure, and go ahead and crank it up a few notches. Be like, remember those stories you used to read? Yeah, but this is what we have now in the movie, you know, and crank it up. Yeah, and, and you know, try try to make it scary. The actual stories themselves, they're actually a lot, you know, like like I said, like they're actually like a lot darker. They're more kind of like psychological, like horror, more darker. You know, it's just kind of like. It leaves things up to your, like your imagination, kind of like what could happen. Yeah. I mean, it was okay, I guess, but I was suspecting more, you know? Like the uh, scene with the pebble lady. I was suspecting that scene to be a lot more tense, a lot more just like creepy and disturbing. But they're just kind of like, ah, oh, dude, man, I had this dream with this pebble lady. I'm kind of scared. I get why they were trying to pertain to a younger audience because they want more young people to know these scary stories. But at the same time, 
they, these kids never heard of scary stories yeah. of Dale in the Dark and like they never read the books because they weren't even born then. I really got like a uh, Goosebumps kind of vibe. It was a little bit more mature than that, Yeah, I will say, but still, not, not, not mature enough. The stories were really yeah. cool. I actually liked the idea of like her, the ghost actually writing the stories and it actually happened. I love that part. Mm -hmm. It just that like the overall arcing yeah. story wasn't great. I don't know, I mean, they, I think they could have done, I mean, they might have, like, they could have done, like, different script of that, of that main story, you know? They could have done something different. I think yeah. that part would... But they didn't. They just made it one big story, and, like, they tried to make it work for everybody. The coolest thing about it was the monsters, like I said. They looked really cool, like, whoever made those masks or whatever. Yeah. And the CGI ones were pretty creepy and disturbing looking, too. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't really care for this movie. It wasn't my favorite. I gotta go a little bit lower on the scoring for this one. I'm gonna get a... a four out of ten. It just wasn't for me. Check it out for yourself. Maybe you like it. I mean, there's a lot of tabloids and everything rating it excellent and stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe it's for you. Or maybe it's, you know, better for like a, a family if, if, if your kids like horror. I really like the monsters in this movie. and They're super cool. It's just that the character, if I had more emotional attachment to the characters, it would have been a way better movie. But none of these characters actually got me hooked to the movie. It was just like, there's kids, I don't really care for them. I'm going to have to give this movie a 5.5 5 out of 10. There were some things that were obviously good, but overall, most things weren't. And I didn't really enjoy it as much as I wanted to when I was going into the movie. Yeah, I give the movie a 6 out of 10. Yeah, it's just because like, it's, not, it's not a shot like, to me. And also too, for like the monster show as well. In the books, they actually have like an illustrator who actually like, drew the monsters out in the books. Yeah. And like what you saw, like what you, what you were see, you know, like, on the uh, screen is basically exactly how the illustrator kind of like drew them out to be. That's part of why I give it a 6 out of 10, just because they kind of stay true to kind of like the monsters of like original creations. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are Mega Nerd Squad. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe. And we will catch you guys next time. Mega Nerd Squad, out! out.